and welcome to another episode of Ubar. Today, we are going to talk about EventBridge Global Endpoints. That is a feature of EventBridge that allows you to build multi-region event-driven applications. I will talk about what it is. We are going to see an example using AWS CDK and putting everything together. So let's get started. If you want to build an event-driven application using AWS, EventBridge is the way. EventBridge is a serverless managed by AWS service that allows you to have an event pass to make your microservices talk to each other. If you don't know what EventBridge is, I have a full playlist uh, that I will leave you in the description box that you go and check the main features, how you can do it, how you can use it, and many patterns to get started because you need to nail one region before going into a multi-region strategy. So event bridge is the veins and the events are the blood that circulates in our application. And if that blood stops moving, then our application doesn't work. So we need to build resilient applications for them. So in order to make sure that our applications are resilient and they can sustain the biggest zombie apocalypse in the world, we want to use a multi-region strategy. If you want to know why to use a multi-region strategy, why are the reasons of what customers are going for, I leave you a link in the description where you can go and check that out. I will not cover that in this video. In spring of 2022, uh, Amazon Event Bridge announced this feature, the global endpoints, that allows you to build this multi-region strategy using event-driven applications. So now it's very easy to have a failover mechanism in order to send events from a primary region. And when that region, for any region, is unhealthy, you can fail over to a secondary region and you can do that through DNS. So global endpoints provides you this global endpoint that is in the DNS level. So again, this is using Route 53. I have a whole video talking about Route 53, so you can go and check it out if you don't know it. But the idea here is to have this global endpoint in the DNS level. So it's a global uh, endpoint. It doesn't depend on a region where your applications are putting the events into. And then uh, based on health checks, that is a way that uh, Route 53 will handle failover. So there is this uh, Route 53 health checks. Uh, event bridge will do the failover. So if the primary region is not healthy, then the failover will happen and will go to secondary region. And then there is this automatic replication of events between two regions. So the events are never lost. Global Endpoint is designed to support this two different strategies that I talked early on of serverless, the business continuity of serverless, that is the backup and a restore and the active active. So you will find that uh, we will have two mechanisms. The first one is active archive. That means that we will have a primary region with the stack, everything is deployed there. And then we have a secondary region that is just getting the replicated events and there is nothing else. We are just archiving the uh, replicated events in the secondary region. If something goes bad, then we can take those events from there. But the most interesting solution for me is the active active approach where we have two fully deploy full stack uh, stacks that are fully working. Everything is up and running. Everything is good. And now we are working with the primary stack. So if something happens on the fly, the failover will happen and the events are going to the secondary region and um, everything is there to support it. So as I said, that is possible because of Route 53 health check. So Route 53 health check is a feature from Route 53 that allows you to create these health checks to uh, monitor different kinds of resources. So if something is wrong according to this monitoring, then the failover will happen. And this is one of the ways that Route 53 will root traffic in your uh, configuration. So you can create a health check specifically to a resource. So if you have a resource like a web server that you can pass like a health check API, like you can say, hey, uh, get 
uh, health check endpoint and it returns a 200, you can do that. Or you can have a health check based on uh, CloudWatch alarms. So you can set up an alarm based on some infrastructure metric or business metric uh, and then mm, have a health check when the alarm is triggered, or then you can have a collection of health check and then have like a parent health check that if something is wrong in those child health checks, uh, you can basically uh, do the failover based on, 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 on a health check of other health checks. <laughs> so it's more complicated. And then when the failover happens, we have this primary region. Now the primary region for some region is down, meaning that the health check got alerted and now our primary is unhealthy. And then the failover will happen to the secondary region. So that's what we want to do today. We want to create um, this type of application. So in order to get started with global endpoints, we can get started from the console. We can create a new endpoint here and then boom, uh, we can get started for making that happen. You need to have two um, buses in different regions with the same name. But I want to show you how to do it from the uh, CDK, because if we are building a multi-region infrastructure, we always need to do it as infrastructure as code. So uh, you will get the code at the end. Here you um, we have how to define that. So. We are using the level one CDK constructor basic that is looking very close to CloudFormation. We are going to put a name. We can put a description if we need to. And then here we need the two ARN Amazon resource name for the two different buses. Here the two buses need to have exactly the same name. Then we are going to create the routing configuration. Uh, the failover basically for the primary is that health check that we are going to create. I will show you how to do it in a moment. And then here we are going to put the region of the secondary, uh, the, the secondary region. So uh, when we define these uh, buses, there is one that is in the primary region, one that is in the secondary. We are going to put the region there. Then we need to enable the replication configuration. So then the events are backed up in the and, and everything is uh, consistent. And if we have any problems, things, something get lost, then the events keep on replicating and we don't lose anything. And then we need to pass a role. And this role needs to have permission uh, to do to put events into the two different buses. So so we can see what uh, what happens when we create this uh, resource with CDK. We can go to the console and we can see here that we have the two advanced buses uh, that have exactly the same name. We have the health check configure. We have the replication enable. And then we will get back the endpoint RNN and the endpoint ID. And we need these values in order to put elements, put events into our global endpoint. I will show you how to do that in a second. So now we can build something and we can see this in action. We can use that uh, global endpoint that I just built and we can build an application that basically has a Lambda function that is putting events into that global endpoint. And then we have two stacks that are exactly the same, one primary and then one secondary uh, stack. They're both active active. So everything is deployed, everything is ready and everything is taking the, um, is working. And the first one has an event bus. Well, they are the, the two of exactly the same. We have a event bus and then a log group. So that meaning that the um, event will put the events into the log group. It will just right into there and it will write an event basically saying uh, from which region the event was received. So if the event comes from the primary region, it will appear in the log group like the event is coming from, um, I think in this case, US West 1. And if it's coming from the secondary region because we are in the failover mode, uh, it will write uh, Ireland. So that's what we are going to build. So. What will happen here is that uh, our Lambda function will put an event, the global endpoint will trigger it to the primary region, and then it will put it in both log groups and it will replicate the event. So it will happen into both log groups into two regions. And then if something goes wrong, the alarms get triggered, then the failover happens. And when we put an event, it will happen to a secondary uh, region. And again, the event will get replicated and will be put in the both log groups. So that's, that's what we are going to do here. 
So we already built this uh, global endpoint and basically before building that global endpoint, it's important that you create the two buses. So I have a primary stack here with the bus and then this testing uh, stack that basically this testing stack is deploying the uh, log group and uh, some permissions and the same, exactly same, I'm doing this secondary stack is exactly the same, um, just with different names. So that's the magic of CDK. We are deploying into different regions, but it's exactly the same. Then uh, I'm going to create here the health check before making the global endpoint because we need that in order for this to happen. So here I'm building the health check and the health check we are building it based on an alarm and the alarm we are building it based on a metric. So we need to start with a metric. So we are going to use this metric ingestion to invocation start latency and this is a metric that global endpoints provide us to tell us if a region is healthy based on latency. So if the latency increase, then uh, we can trigger the alarm. So here we have the alarm on the high latency. And if we have this uh, threshold, if it reach, then boom, the alarm is triggered. And then the health check is built against that alarm. So if this happens, then the alarm gets triggered, the health check gets a failover, and that uh, will trigger the uh, the failover in route 53. So this is uh, how this is built. So there's some permissions there. And then with that, then we can build the, the global endpoint that I show you. And finally here, uh, we will grab that endpoint ID that uh, building this global endpoints will provide this that we will need in our stack. That is basically one Lambda function that put that uh, event. So this is a Lambda function that is uh, writing into that endpoint. So how this Lambda function looks. So basically, this is a Lambda function that is running for 15 minutes, basically, and it's putting events uh, into the bus. So this is very demo-y, but I don't want to build something very complicated. And the interesting thing is here, we are using the uh, AWS SDK to put events and we are going to write into the event bus and then we are going to pass the endpoint. So here is the difference that if you are going to write directly into an event bus, you will pass the event bus name, but because we are using the global endpoint, I need the endpoint ID in order to write these events into the endpoint. Uh, and that is what this Lambda is doing, is writing events, 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 events. And with that in place, now we can go and see what happens. So this is uh, how it looks. So now we are in the first uh, mode. We have in two sides, one the primary region and then the secondary region. And we are in the uh, initial state. Basically our alarm is uh, not healthy because it doesn't have enough data. So we can see that uh, I'm looking this from CloudWatch uh, logs uh, insights. And basically I can see uh, the different log groups that I have created. And I can see that my health check is unhealthy and the events are coming um, from the secondary region. Then now uh, time pass, I have enough data, my alarm uh, becomes uh, okay. And then my health check becomes healthy because the alarm is okay. I have enough data, everything is good. And uh, I can start seeing that the events are coming in from the primary region. You can see there, they're coming from US East one. And that's my primary region. And then I can see that the two log groups have replicated the events and they have exactly uh, the same thing. And now finally, if we make our health check unhealthy, basically we can do that by inverting the health check. We can go to the properties of the health check and we can say, hey, invert this. Uh, and now our health check will be unhealthy no matter what our alarm says. And basically we can start running the query again and we can start seeing that the events are coming from the secondary region. So basically they're coming from the secondary region and getting replicated into the primary region. That's why we see the events in the two uh, sides. So this is how the flow works. Uh, now we have set up the global endpoints and yeah. So that's the video for today. I hope you like this type of video. Uh, let me know uh, what you think. I have 
more demos to show you on global endpoints, but I don't know if that's something that interests you to see a bigger application. Let me know if that's uh, something that you, you want to see. Uh, I, I'm more than happy to create that content. The code of this app is available in the description uh, box of this demo of this video. There is other links where you can find way more information. And this video is part of a series of architecting multi-region applications with serverless. You can find the reasons why people are going to multi-region by checking this video that is here for you. And I see you in another episode of Uber. Ciao, ciao.